so after uh, five transistor OTA, what was the next configuration we looked at? Telescopic cascode. So let's look at that quickly. So I'll quickly sketch it. And here we did the self biasing by diode connecting this transistor. So once again here you will have two different transfer functions depending on the two inputs. And we typically define the transfer function with respect to the differential mode and the common mode input. So again I look at only the differential mode transfer function. So this is plus VID by 2. So minus VID by 2. So let me start uh, marking all the capacitors. Or let me first make the, I mean, I'll draw the small signal picture so the supply is short. Okay. And remember, these are all connected to some DC bias voltages the, for the cascodes. So in small signal, they are also short. So I'll redraw them like this. Okay. Let me mark all the capacitors. So this is the output node where I have let us say load capacitor CL that also lumps the parasitic capacitance from uh, this node to the gate, this node to the gate, this node to ground and so on. Right? Similarly, I can mark all capacitors. So here, let us say this is C1, I do not have space. Let me call this uh, C2 and C3. C4 and C5. And just like the 5 transistor OTA, here also I will ignore the CGD because if I include CGD that is introducing unnecessary coupling between uh, different time constants, so I will ignore CGD. So that will make our life simple. And again, I am looking at the differential mode part. So again, here there is a capacitor. So what assumptions I can make for the differential mode circuit so that my life can become simple? Huh? I mean, for the 5 transistor OTA, what was an additional assumption I made in the differential mode? R0 of the which transistor? In MOS, in particular these fellows, right? So I'll let's say mark it M1, M2. So if I ignore R0 of uh, the NMOS transistors here, then as usual, what can you say about Vx? Zero. It's clear. If this is zero, then uh, this guy is short. So now I no longer have to worry about Cx. But again, just like the five transistor OTA case, Cx will contribute to a pole, and if you calculate the zero locations here and tend R0 of the NMOS to infinity, one zero will exactly cancel this pole. Okay, that's what that's what happens behind the screens, but we don't have to worry about it so much. Let's simplify our life. Okay. Cool. So now let's find out how many poles we have, how many poles we will have here. Number of poles depends on the maximum number of initial conditions I can have in the capacitors. How many capacitor voltages I can initialize independently here? 6. I mean I can put initial conditions on all the 6 capacitors. There will be no contradiction. So I have total of 6 poles. And I just know that again the load capacitor is much much greater than the other capacitors. But I do not know the relative values of the other capacitors. Okay. So which means I know this guy is the largest capacitor and I know the resistance looking into the largest capacitor is the largest resistor also. So I can safely say that the dominant pole 
is from which capacitor cl and when i find the uh, resistance due to cl i can assume all the other capacitors to be open because this is contributing the to the lowest frequency pole at that pole frequency it is safe to ignore that it is safe to assume that the other capacitors are, other capacitors are still open right? so what is the resistance looking here yeah it is the cascode of this fellow parallel with cascode of this so i am not writing the full expression i'll say it is the output conductance by the load capacitance So now let's try to find the other pole locations and for finding the other high frequency poles what can i assume for cl cl can be safely assumed to be short okay. so this is now short so for finding the other poles i'll i can nicely assume that cl is short <coughs> so now you see i have a fifth order system i have five capacitors i do not know the relative values of the capacitors also so which means i cannot directly you know write the pole as 1 by rc but once again if you kind of see if the capacitors are coupled here so you will find that the uh, coupling between the capacitors is very weak that i'll give it as an exercise for you to do it just simply means you have to find the resistance looking into each of the nodes assuming that uh, capacitor is open capacitor is short right that is essentially finding the small signal resistance looking into different nodes when this node is this capacitor is open this capacitor is short this is open this is short and so on that is an exercise i'll give it to you if you do that you will find that the resistance looking into each capacitor doesn't change so much if the other capacitors are open or short so once again you can approximate that the uh, time constants here are uncoupled okay. so which means you can write the pole as uh the effective resistance rk times the capacitance c so again i'll uh, give it as an exercise for you to work out the resistance looking into each of these nodes so by this time hopefully you are more comfortable in doing this and that's why the first practice set i get i gave so many problems so that you get used to the calculations so that's it uh, that's about the poles so now let's look at the zeros So let me include CL here. This is the output. So uh, how do you find if I have zeros in the circuit? What is the test we do for finding if we have zeros? We short the capacitors. So let us see how. What is the maximum number of capacitors I can short so that the output is still non-zero? So tell me what all capacitors do you think I can short so that the output is still non-zero? I mean, remember, I am applying inputs V I D by two minus V I D by two here. I am interested in this output. That's it. I just want this fellow to be non-zero, right? So, which all capacitors do you think I can short? All. Except zero. Uh, okay, let's do. I mean, first of all, you see that the we have two different halves now. I am only interested in the output tap from the right side half. So, I can essentially short everything on the left side. Definitely three. which means this guy is not active that's okay because i have the input fed here i'll get the output from here right now uh, what about c2 if i short c2 what happens if i short c2 this is generating a small signal current in response to the voltage but that current where is it flowing now to the short circuit so what will be output so i can't short c2 what about cl i cannot short but i can short this way if i short this once again this is inactive that's still okay because we have this portion giving non zero so totally how many capacitors i can short four right so i have four zeros and the capacitors i can short are uh, c1 c3 c4 and c5 
let me erase this So again, if you want to find the location of the zeros, you do the same thing. You assume that the uh, output in the Laplace domain is zero, and then you apply KCL. You have total of one, two, three, four, five, and six nodes. So you have six nodes. You can write six KCL equations. Uh, but how many node voltages are unknown here? I have six nodes. Are all the six node voltages unknown, or? Five, right? Because I know this fellow zero, so you have six equations. I have five node voltages as unknown. So what will you do for the sixth variable? Huh? The complex frequency s, right? So here you find what is the value of complex frequency s that makes sure v out of s is zero. And if you solve for s, you will get some you know fourth order polynomial in s. Blah blah blah. You solve for it, you will find the zero locations. But again, if you do it, you will find that the zero locations might be much far compared to your dominant pole so we'll not do the calculations but we'll assume that the zeros are located much farther than the dominant pole which typically might be the case so once again if i sketch the uh, magnitude response of the telescopic cascode it has a large dc gain i'll have only one dominant pole it drops and all the other high frequency poles and zeros might come somewhere here not worry about the exact shape so something will happen so again approximately you can say that this is a first order system so i can approximate the transfer function as a first order system like this a not by 1 plus a not by 1 plus s by p1 where the p1 is the dominant pole and the dominant pole here is coming due to the load capacitance and the output conductance And for that matter, all the single stage OTAs that we have seen so far, starting from the pi transistor OTA, all the cascodes we have seen, all of them in practice we can approximate them to be a first order system like this with only one dominant pole. This one? Sorry. Uncouple the poles. This one you say. Oh, I mean these are I mean these are connected to a bias voltage ideally. For small signals they are short, right? So I'm just drawing the small signal equivalent here directly. Yeah, yeah, same thing, right? I told you, if you ignore R naught of the NMOS, this voltage is zero, so you don't have to worry. But if you include the effect of R naught, then this node voltage is not exactly zero. So C X will add to an additional pole and an additional zero, right? And if you calculate those additional pole and additional zero, and put R naught of N naught R naught of N most to infinity, though one zero will cancel one pole. Correct. Yeah, other yeah looks like it's one by gm, right? Because in OTA this node is the highest, you know, like node with the highest impedance. Is that okay? So in practice, we typically model our single stage OTS this way. So it is just one transconductor with some short circuit transconductance GM. Has its own intrinsic output resistance or conductance. And we will say that the dominant pole is due to this one. So the dominant pole here is again G out by C. So this is a simplistic model we will use for all our pi transistor OTA, CAS, telescopic cascode, folded cascode, everything. So anytime in your system you want to have something like this, now you know what are the possible configurations. You can have the five transistor, telescopic cascode, folder cascode, gain boosted, gain boosted cascode, anything.